That was a faff. Couldn't get a grommet to go through the hole because um, it's a thick. So I've had to make up that. So a couple of uh, quarter inch BSF locking it in. And it's, it's got it anyway. Lying on me here under the lathe. means we're ready to go so that's my uh, 240 volt single phase in 240 volt three phase out and it's on a flying lead so that I can use the shaper the mill all that lathe all this lathe uh, it just means if any of them go down I'm all right uh, yeah so uh, I've tightened the belts put some oil in the various spindles and I've not set the clutch up at all, so we shall press the big, well, we'll put it into inch first, which is uh, 25 hertz. Right, so we're out of gear. I think the clutch is dragging. At least it stops all right. Yeah, so uh, I've got to figure out the uh, getting the clutch set up. The levers, that's drive. There. That's the brake. So that should be in neutral. Um, I'm expecting to have to bugger about with it. Anyway, it didn't blow any fuses, so it's got to be a good thing. I'll bring you back when I've got something decent to show. It's just a lot of fiddly jobs at the minute. Right. So, uh, add it up and running. Um, I've, I've adjusted the clutch as much as I can, and I'm struggling to get the actual drive to drop off. Um, it's catching. So I've took the pulley off. I took the guards off. Took the pulley off. Um, I've adjust. I've turned that round, which is the cam, which is operating. So as the handles move left or right, pushes that, shifts the brass shoes, and it shifts a rack, which this thing is um, a pinion, got a little pinion gear on it, and it rotates, which is opening and closing this, which is the shoe which transfers the drive from the permanently spinning pulley down onto the shaft. Um, I freed that up a little bit. It was a little bit tight. I don't know whether it was debris in it or what, but I, I mean, I've stripped and cleaned it twice. Um, what I've found is there is, and it's difficult to show because I've not got the rest of it assembled, but on operating the lever, you see how that moves that way. Quite a bit, yeah. Now some of that is taken up with um, these spacers and there's a locking nut which clamps the uh, interior races of the pulleys inside the drive pulley so inside the bearings clamps that up so that a bit of that's taken out but there's still 
a degree of movement and that's reducing the amount of rotation I get on that. Now I think that that movement is as a result of wear at the other end of the assembly inside the back here and I'm afraid you're going to have to go back through the, uh, the videos to where I'm stripping and cleaning this out and there's a pair of discs which sit either side of um, the cast iron boss which runs into the head and you've got a, uh, the driven uh, gear this side of it then one of these discs then you've got the bearing at the other end of this then you've got another disc and then you've got the arse end of oh, I probably can't see any of that look let me just get my little torch all that lot in there and I think there's perhaps just a little bit too much wear going on so the only way of sorting that is to take the whole lot apart and uh, make up some kind of a uh, packing disc on and the, the, the two discs that are in there are you know, well, they're, they're very hard uh, with oil grooves cut around them um, what I've, I've made all the adjustments I can make I'm now going to build it back up and fire it up again and see if what I've done is enough if it is not I think what I'm going to do is run it without the clutch just lock the clutch on get it set up and then basically make that piece up as a uh, as a project down the line um, it wasn't working when I got it I've corrected all the things that I could correct on the bench until I've actually got the thing set up so uh, we shall see um, another option is that on this end um, the bearing that was sitting in the end of this casing was absolutely shot so I made up a new bronze bushing with that to the dimensions that were on it and it sits proud here now I'm wondering whether with a bit of jiggery pokery I could make a um, spacer which fits fills the gap between the arse face of the this which if you look has got uh, some faces on it so a bit, uh, just a basically a spacer disc to take it out that would be an easier solution again I could probably do that with the thing built up and I've only got to drop the outer casing off um, so yeah that's where I'm at so I've not done a huge amount certainly not even got in close to looking at the bearings only that when I've had it running for about seven or eight minutes there's no heat in these at all so I know that the spacing's too big um, I've bedded in the two new bearings on there so that it's uh, not stalling out or anything and I've gone through and done all the gear changes uh, but the cap, the, the lid's still loose uh, because I'm buggering about. Shoo! I'll build it back up and uh, take it for a run again. So here's the rub. Um, so it's in its, as I understand it, its freewheel position, i.e. not drive, not in drive. So that little, the little dog down there is in the first slot. So then as you move, that I think is run, dry, uh, free wheel. Now if it's not, I've got to adjust that cam again. Um, but until I know otherwise. Um, anyway, that's not the issue. So that's, I've set that to be in the run position, but it, that should now spin freely all the way around. And it's got a really tight spot for about half of it which is effectively why my clutch is dragging absolutely you know it's a two-hand job to turn it um all i can think of is that the idea of that isn't running true anymore which is a bit of a sod so i'm wondering now whether to take the bleeding thing off knock the bearings out again stick it up on my lathe and tickle up the inside face which is a bit, it seems a bit extreme, but it's definitely, I mean, I know the ring that's expanding isn't going to be round because of the way it's made. It might have started out round, but it'll have worn a bit. It just seems odd that the inside of that isn't running true, but the only way of checking it is to have it in, on the lathe and spinning it. Because it's got a centre to it. I can't just do diam diameter checks easily. Yeah. It's not going as smoothly as was hoped. Oh, well got the pulley off bearings out um, I don't know whether you can see the section where the bearings have been fitted 
has at some stage been scraped for fit. Um, I'm struggling getting the thing to run concentric either side because I want I want to get the bearing contact faces running true or certainly within the thow and then measure this because that's where the problem is um, I struggle doing this sort of thing uh, and it's a little bit on the oversized for the chuck um, where I think there's a problem I think the actual that that isn't running concentric to that which isn't isn't helping and I think that has got um, I think there's some distortion on it now whether that's happened uh, in its previous life or just distorted over time I don't know so we're uh, gonna see what we can do if I can just um, if I can get that if I know that that's within a thou it's concentric to that I'm happy but it's looking like a bit more than that so that's uh, about as close as I can get the thing it's within a thou running there I mean bearing in mind it's scraped so you're bouncing over things uh, when I run it on here I've got sort of three or four thou um, not easy to determine so what I'm going to do is mark on here where the high spots are and see if it's still actually out around as according to me chucking it up and then see if they correspond to the same on here um, I think there'll be an element of it well I've decided to uh, make up a shaft to fit the idea of the bearings so I've reassembled the pulley with the bearings having flushed them out again um, so I've got it set up now between centers so everything now should be running concentric with the bearings it's a freshly machined shaft uh, it's a nice not a press fit but a, a, a decent fit on it's a bit pikey how it's set up to drive I've got a, a drive onto the dog and then another one from the dog to the to the pulley but it, it works um, if I that's a, a needle a DTI pin and if I zoom in So you can see there's two thou movement there and I think that's basically enough to be giving me the problem and it's consistent across its width so I'm just going to tickle it out now. And that's what I could hear when I was uh, trying to get it to operate. It's about a third of it is picking up. not by much but it's enough to make it drag Taking off a thou or two, just in little gentle passes. Can't take too much off, otherwise, it won't uh, act as a friction drive. So that's took uh, two and a half thou out. that's off radius so that's about five thou off diameter I don't want to do any more than that it's pretty cleaned up but you can see that uh, that surface isn't running concentric to the bearing housings it's certainly a hell of a lot better than it was um, just hope I've got enough adjustment to uh, make that uh, expansion uh, ring fit um, I've also checked these these are running bob on so I think what's happened is I think there's either been some some distortion on it or 
with having it clamped up and left clamped by the previous owners um, it might have just taken on a set um, or started it and then it's continually picked up at the same spot and it's er er worn it I don't know I'm guessing pretty much irrelevant anyway so we get that down now and stick it back on and see what happens hopefully it's resolved the issue well, I'll put it all back together it's about half an hour after I've finished machining the uh, pulley uh, it's better but it's still not right um, it's still catching when it should be free to spin so my next port of call is I don't want to machine any more out of the pulley although that would probably be the easiest thing to do I am going to take the housing off take the pulley off again um, and I'm wondering whether I might, might um, blow up the inside of the pulley and see if I can see whereabouts it's catching on the brake on the uh, expanding disc because it can't be it, it's it's clipping it rather than locking up tight which it was doing before right now it's tea time bugger well I took it off blued it up and I can see a mark there but you can definitely see where it's hard on either side which is that bit so I'm just going to run the file over those a little bit dress them down and uh, see what happens because there's no ink anywhere else on it only on where it's like, transferred because I'm pushing it and pulling it on and off like around these edges here So, yeah, do that first. So that's the spacer. That's pushing up against the uh, flat face of the locking collar. And it should, unless my dimensions are wrong, it should take up the end, end float. Um, there's no provision for I thought a thrust bearing or anything on that way. I think it was, I think the original bearing sleeve, um, which is, ta -da, that one. I don't know whether that's the original that was in there from the start or not. But if you look at it, it doesn't look to be of any wear on the internal end. That was the external end. So I don't know. To find out in a minute I'll build it back up well when I fitted it back together I could spin that free and you can see it's picking up I don't know whether there's a problem with the bearings moving can't see why because they don't feel loose you know, they feel quite snug or something else shifting um, which would be the shoe arrangement. So I'm going to take it off again and see if I can find out. That f works in so much as uh, there isn't any end, any significant end float. Well, certainly a th fraction of what there was. Right, uh, yeah, getting frustrated. Well, I seem to be going round in circles. I've uh, stripped it all off, cleaned out, made sure there was nothing um, sitting between this movable disc and it's seat and there isn't and it, it does float a little bit there's a I don't know, a couple of thou and then you've got that bit of movement there um, but now predominantly it's catching in this area which is if you like the bit that I would have thought it would be uh, least likely to catch in because it's exact opposite point of the bit where it's um, pushed apart so I would have thought that would almost be a kind of hinge so I've got two options I can either dress that off as I did over these two or I go back stick this back onto centers and take a little bit more out I'm just 
concern that taking it off this is all the time opening it up which means that that's got to open up more to catch it um it's not right and i can't work out why i'm getting it what you know it doesn't stack up uh, as to why there's the problem unless this clutch has been built up uh, at some stage with parts off another one uh, i just don't know but uh, it's a bit of a head banger anyway i'm gonna have a break because i'm getting frustrated and i don't want to cock it up all right so we're back assembled um so the clutch will now freewheel and that just needs setting up now which is where i was hoping we were going to be starting but uh, we're not but it's a step forward so we now got to adjust that the amount of expansion we get when we operate the lever and the adjustment is made through one of those holes we have to rotate it and round until we get the uh, access to those screws there so we undo the bottom one and tighten the top one and that adjusts a wedge which determines for a given movement how much expansion you get so we'll bore about that for a bit so the motor's running and that's top speed I'm not going to lie, uh, oh, that was a right pain in the rear end, um, just bloody frustrating, more so because I can't work out how something that should have been worn down was bigger. Uh, I think I've took off 8 thou on, um, so that's 16 thou on diameter from the inside of the uh, friction face of the pulley. Uh, and when you think that that's the one that should be worn down, but it was oval. Um, and what I think's happened is somebody at some stage has got has buggered about with it, decided they couldn't get it to work, and just rammed the ring out so it was rigid. And it's caused the distort, it's caused the, the actual pulley to distort. But the distortion at the on the the grooves was minimal. And that's what I don't quite get my head around. Anyway doesn't matter it's working now um, I suspect I'm gonna need to do, tweak it again when I start actually putting some load through the spindle with chucks and turning actually taking material um, so yeah uh, I'm now at the stage I was hoping to be at about two and a half weeks ago um, so I've had it running for about 10 or 15 minutes at uh, 600 rpm which is its top speed and there's I, I can't feel any change in temperature of the bearing um, caps so I, I should now actually take a shim out drop that gap down to two thou and uh, do it all again um, but right at the minute I'm going to take the early win and <laughs> call it a day um, so the job basically is fire it up check the monitor the temperature of those um, spindle, uh, spindle bearing caps and just bring that clearance down a little bit um, I could actually for what for the sake of what I'm doing leave it as it is um, and do that at a later stage um, <laughs> surprised how noisy those gears are in the headstock um, and there's no sign of and no obvious witness marks I don't know where as such I think it's just that kind of gears a bit noisy I was hoping it would be a little bit quieter than that um, so I'm going to actually have a tidy up now because I haven't tidied up in here for over a month and it's like a bomb site. And I'm trying to decide do I actually lift and put the gearbox on, get it up off the floor and out of the way. Um, and I'm also having to think about now before I start mess messing around, 
bedding the um, carriage on, or saddle as you like, um, wondering whether to actually locate the lathe in its final position because I'm getting sick and tired of squeezing past it and around it and it needs to be over there by nearly a metre. So yeah, um, going to try and cobble together a video for the commission and the clutch. Uh, not quite the one I wanted to put up, but uh, it just shows things don't go according to plan. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, hit the button, and hit the button for notifications. Leave us a comment, because they are appreciated. And uh, if you want to know how to um, re-engineer one of these clutches, don't ask me.